So, some more RTX 3080 news today. Um, things seem to be ever changing in this space at the moment. A couple of things I want to talk about. First and foremost, it looks like Nvidia may have fixed the instability issues, which is, which is good news and bad news, depending on how you look at it. And we'll get to that in a minute. But first of all, I just wanted to cover some responses that we've had from board partners about their individual cards. There was a really good article on techpowerup.com, which I'll link to in the description if you want to read the whole thing. And I thought I'd just summarize it here because it's good to see that the board partners are looking at the issue, addressing the issue, um, and not just kind of ignoring it or, or you know, trying to brush it under the carpet. So one of the things I also want to mention before we talk about their responses is that a lot of people are sort of blaming them for using the, the cheaper capacitors, which, you know, is is true. They have, If they've chosen to use the cheaper caps, then that is a conscious choice um, sort of to minimise production costs and maximise profit. It's just business, it's industry, it's the way life goes. But had they have had more time to test these cards after production and before they ship them out to people, they would have come across these issues. And some of the board partners say they have, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and we may not have ended up in the situation we're in. Now, what happened was, um, NVIDIA only supplied them with drivers suitable for benchmarking and thermal testing rather than what they could actually use to, to play games with, which sounds a little odd, but apparently that's just normal procedure. Um, and so for thermal testing and benchmarking and things like Fermark, there was no, no obvious instability issues. But in real world applications, in games, this is where we're getting these, these crashes to desktop. Um, so had NVIDIA have given them a little more time and give them a full driver set to work with, they may well have discovered, or more of the, the board partners may well have discovered these issues sooner. Now, let's just go through the responses that Tech Power Up had. So the first one is, is Asus, and they said they found the issue during production and testing, and they have chose to use the better capacitors. So their cards should be stable, but they're not. Now this is the other issue. It seems like it's not just the capacitors that are the problem. There seems to be other issues as well contributing to it. But what we are seeing is the cards with these better caps, like the, the Azus cards, they are seeing much, much less problems than the ones with just the cheaper ones on. Um, Colourful, who were actually the first board partner to report the issue to the press, they actually recalled their review cards, their samples that they sent out, um, you know, to, to try and rectify this issue before before any proper reviews of their cards come out. And presumably, if they've recalled the review samples, I'm guessing maybe their cards weren't available to buy on the day of release, and so consumers haven't got them yet. I don't, I don't actually know, but if they've gone to the trouble of recalling the review samples, that would be kind of pointless if people had them out in the wild as well. But that, I mean, I don't know, but interesting. Um, EVGA said they also discovered the issue during production and testing, and that is why they delayed their FTW cards. Um, they weren't available on the day of release because they wanted to um, you know, solve this issue before they released them. Um, what else did they say? They said some pre-production review samples had gone out and that those cards are being replaced. So again, they're trying to sort the issue as well. Gainwood used five of the cheaper caps and one array of the better ones, which is the minimum sort of reference spec, I believe, that NVIDIA sent out. Uh, and they said that their cards are fine at this, at this moment in time. They haven't had any reported issues. And they also pointed out that you do have a warranty, you know, on the card should you get any issues. Galax actually said exactly the same thing about their cards as well. Um, Inno 3D says that their cards have no issue at all. That's literally all they've said. So um, I don't know whether their cards have got two arrays of the better caps or whether they've done something else. You know, maybe they discovered it in testing and found a way to correct it. I don't know, but all they've said is, our cards have no problems, you're all good. Um, and if that's true, then that is good, because at least that's one reliable um, board partner there that you can buy a card from with confidence. MSI, they've used one array of the good capacitors, but they think it's more a driver problem, or at least they've said they think it's more of a driver problem than a hardware problem although they seem to be quietly changing the design of their cards from some other information I've stumbled across 
online. So make of that what you will. Um, Zotac, they haven't used any of the good capacitors and they've just said that they're investigating the problem. So we'll see what happens there. But it's good that these are being, you know, looked into. Um, and, you know, at the moment, nothing's in stock anywhere anyway, so you can't get one. Maybe these issues will be fully resolved, whether it's hardware changes, software changes, or a combination of both, uh, by the time cards come back in stock and are available for the likes of me and you to buy one. Now, here's where we get to the point where the problem has been fixed, hopefully, by one method or another. NVIDIA have released a new driver and this is supposed to cure the problem altogether. Now, um, EVGA have said that their cars with the six um, cheaper caps are now stable and aren't having any problems, so that's good to know. Um, and other manufacturers are reporting better stability too. Obviously, it's only been out I think, since yesterday, so time will tell whether this driver update will sort it. But what they've done in this driver update is, as expected, reduce the boost clock. So, much like I speculated in my previous video and how others have speculated across YouTube and online, the, the more these cards were boosting up, the more unstable they were becoming. So they have pulled back the boost clock to make them stable, which some people are not gonna be happy about. Um, and as we said before, it's never the boost clock that was guaranteed in the first place, it was only the base clock and the sort of boost clock, the self overclocking function is only almost like a bonus, although we do expect it to work. Now, I think what they've done is cap it at two, 2000 megahertz or two gigahertz, which is still a reasonable step up from the base clock of sort of 1700 to 1750, depending on what card you buy. But being capped at that, that, that two gigahertz is obviously gonna limit overclocking potential as well for, for enthusiasts. Um, now, I'm not someone that dicks about with overclocking. I buy a good card and I just leave it because I want it to be as stable as possible. But for those of you out there that do like to overclock, if we know there's a known problem going above two gigahertz because of a physical hardware issue with these capacitors, you know you're not gonna be able to squeeze any more out of these cards, at least not reliably. I mean, again, this is slightly speculation. We'll see what happens going forward. We'll see whether the driver update has you know, really solved the issue by lowering those boost clocks. We'll see when stock becomes available, whether board partners have change the design of their PCBs, whether they've you know gone from a, a six cheaper cap design to five cheaper caps and one array of the good caps, or whether they've gone for four of the cheaper caps and, and two arrays of the better caps, like the Founders Edition board. But I mean, there must be, there must be stock already produced in the existing configuration that's got to go somewhere. I can't imagine they're just gonna, you know, throw them away and make some new ones. Although, uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? I don't know enough about the industry to speculate, really. But that's where we're at today. Potentially, this issue is fixed by just lowering the boost clock. Um, our board partners are looking into everything and making whatever adjustments they can. So if you've bought a 3080 RTX and you've, you've literally got it, you can probably breathe easy knowing that at least with this driver update that just trims the boost clock back a little bit, your car is going to be usable and going to be stable and you're not going to have any worries. And that really is what's the most important thing. You know, I, to be honest, I wouldn't be worried if it would only boost to two gigahertz. For me, that performance is still way above the 2080 Ti. It's still in some benchmarks double what my current 2080 does. And you know, for the price of 650 to 700 pound, it's still a really good deal. So me personally, I'm not gonna pre-order one again just yet. I'm gonna wait and see whether this driver update has sorted it properly, whether we stop getting issues across all, um, all manufacturers of the card, and wait and see what else happens. Again, you know, because I was getting one to run my Reverb G2, which isn't coming now till November, I've got breathing space. So I can see what happens with the AMD cards as well, the big Navi stuff. So yes, a little update today on where we're at with those RTX 3080s. 
Again, really this is from my sim community, those of us that have been waiting to buy a card to run triples or a new VR headset like my Reverb G2 that I'm waiting on. You know, this sort of stuff's all very interesting. At least I think it's interesting. Anyway, so hopefully you find it interesting too. But anyway, as always, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy.